Spotter items of foot pursuits, shoot them at vehicles, and taser use, and observe taser training scenarios. In addition, we referred back to training materials we reviewed for our prior report. We met with PP executives, internal affairs, and training divisions. We also attended the police review board proceedings in the Otis case as well as another incident that may be subject to later review. As called for in the review project design, we also reviewed reports and recommendations from PARC that have been prepared periodically since 2003. Our analysis centers on the quality and thoroughness of the Bureau's internal investigation and review of each of the incidents presented. We look at relevant training and policy issues and corrective actions initiated by the Bureau. We do not opine on whether any particular shooting or related tactic or use of force is within policy, nor do we criticize the actions of the individual officers involved or second-guess the Bureau's decisions on accountability and discipline. We do fault the Bureau, however, when we find issues that were not addressed or thoroughly plugged by the investigation and review process that could have impacted the Bureau's findings on the appropriateness of the force or other tactical decision-making. This report contains three sections. Section 1 contains a factual summary of each of the seven critical incidents, along with an analysis of issues presented by each. Section 2 is an analysis of themes and issues we identify that are common to several of the seven incidents. Section 3 presents a list of all recommendations we made throughout this report. 5 6 Section 1 Officer Involved Shooting Summary and Analysis October 12, 2005 Marcelo Vida on October 12, 2005, Officers Chan Randall and Ryan Derry were assigned to the gang enforcement team. Both officers were in uniform patrolling in an unmarked police car. Officer Derry was driving. At approximately 10.40 p.m., the officers attempted to contact Mr. Vieira after they observed him throw an object at a moving vehicle and determined to stop him for offensive littering. Mr. Vieira was on foot. As Officer Gradwell stepped out of the police car, he told Mr. Vieira that he wished to speak with him. Mr. Vieira turned away, reached toward his waistband and ran. Officer Gradwell chased Mr. Vieira, yelling at Mr. Vieira to stop. Mr. Vieira stopped with his back to Officer Gradwell. As Officer Gradwell came to a stop, Mr. Vieira turned to face the officer and raised his hands. When Mr. Vieira raised his hands his sweatshirt lifted slightly at which time Officer Granwell observed an object in Mr. Vieira's waistband that appeared to be the butt of a gun. Officer Granwell also noticed that Mr. Vieira had a shooter's glove on the right hand and no glove on the left hand. 7. Officer Granwell drew his firearm and commanded Mr. Vieira to go to the ground. Mr. Vieira did not comply but began looking around. Meanwhile, Officer Derry had driven the police car to where Officer Granwell and Mr. Vieira had stopped. When Officer Derry arrived, Officer Granwell directed Officer Derry to use his taser on Mr. Vieira. Officer Derry fired his taser at Mr. Vieira as Mr. Vieira turned. The taser had no apparent effect and Mr. Vieira resumed running away from the officers. Reviewers later opined that Mr. Vieira's heavy jacket impeded the effectiveness of the taser. Officer Gradwell resumed his foot pursuit, with Officer Derry following several feet behind. As Mr. Vieira continued to run, Officer Gradwell observed him looking back at the officers while Mr. Vieira's hand remained at his waistband area. Officer Derry broadcast over his radio that the officers were in foot pursuit. The foot pursuit continued into an apartment complex parking lot. Mr. Vieira rounded a parked car, causing Officer Granwell to lose sight of him momentarily. As Officer Granwell continued to pursue by coming around the back of a parked vehicle, he then observed Mr. Vieira shoot at him. Officer Granwell was between 10 and 15 feet from Mr. Vieira when the shooting commenced. Officer Granwell then returned fire and began to move toward the cover of a parked car. Once behind the parked car, Officer Granwell continued to shoot until he observed Mr. Vieira fall to the ground. During the exchange of gunfire, Officer Granwell performed a tactical reload of his weapon. Mr. Vieira got up from the ground, at which time Officer Granwell fired additional rounds until Mr. Vieira went down again. As Officer Derry trailed the pursuit, he lost sight of Officer Granwell for one two seconds and then heard gunfire. Officer Derry said that, it was obvious to me, there's no question that the subject has almost ambushed Granwell as he turned the corner and has opened gunfire on him. Officer Derry said Officer Granwell was out of his sight but saw the muzzle flash of a gun firing toward where he had last seen Officer Granwell. Officer Derry drew his weapon while taking cover at the corner of a building and fired at Mr. Vieira until he observed him fall to the ground. When the shooting ended, both officers observed Mr. Vieira throw his handgun away. Officer Granwell estimated that the gun landed approximately 10 feet from Mr. Vieira. Mr. Vieira continued to move around and ignore the officer's commands to lay still. At one point, Mr. Vieira retrieved a cell phone from his jacket and made a call. Eight, the two officers used their radios to direct responding officers to the location and ordered bystanders out of the immediate area. When cover units arrived, officers Granwell and Derry were relieved from their positions and escorted away. Arriving cover officers evacuated bystanders and established a perimeter around the scene. Officers armed with AR-15 rifles were designated to cover Mr. Vieira. Mr. Vieira continued to ignore appeal commands to be still. A responding officer was ordered to use less lethal rounds to shoot out a streetlight that was seen as providing Mr. Vieira a silhouette of the responding officers. In addition, that officer fired several less lethal beanbag rounds at Mr. Vieira as he lay on the ground at which point Mr. Vieira complied with orders to remain still. The Bureau's Special Emergency Response Team, SCRT, was activated and eventually took Mr. Vieira into custody. Mr. Vieira survived his wounds. The commander's review memorandum found that the use of force by the officers was in policy and recommended a debriefing for officers Granwell and Derry. The use of force review board met on December 6, 2005.
2006 and found that the use of deadly force by Officer Granwald and the use of deadly force and use of the taser by Officer Derry were within policy. There were no further recommendations emanating from the review board. Timeline of investigation and review October 12, 2005, January 18, 06, March 22, 2006, October 9, 2006, December 6, 2006, date of incident A investigation. Again, A investigation completed. Commander's findings completed. Use of force review board 9 analysis issues presented insufficient radio communication. When officers Granwall and Derry decided to stop Mr. Vieira, they did not radio their intent to do so or provide the location of their stop. Similarly, when the officers first went in foot pursuit, neither officer radioed the initiation of that pursuit nor broadcast any information during the pursuit. It was only after the taser was used and toward the end of the second foot pursuit that Officer Derry radioed that they were in foot pursuit, but he provided no further information about location, description of the suspect, or any belief about whether the suspect was armed. Almost contemporaneous with that radio broadcast, shots were fired and another 35 seconds elapsed before Officer Derry provided a location for backup units to respond. As the Bureau recognized in developing its 2506 in-service training, encounters with individuals in the field can be very hazardous because the officer may not know who the person is, if they have any weapons, or what their intent is. Academy training instructed officers to attempt to broadcast before arrival or upon arrival if possible and to provide basic information such as the number of suspects, reason for the contact, sex, race, and age of the suspect, and the location of the stop. With regard to foot pursuits, the 2506 PPB in-service training provided that, when tactically feasible, officer S should broadcast information about the changing dynamics of the foot pursuit, information such as direction of travel subject description, any changes in circumstance subject behavior in this incident. The responding officers did not radio any information as they arrived to encounter Mr. Vieira, even though there was no apparent inability to do so. Moreover, during the first foot pursuit, there was no broadcast by the officers or any information provided about whom they were chasing. When Officer Derry finally radioed that they were in foot pursuit after the taser incident and during the second chase, he provided no information about the location or the suspect. As a result, it was not until the shooting ended that the two officers provided any information to other PPP officers about location or the nature of the operation. 10. The training analysis prepared after the investigation of this incident expressly recognized the tactical shortcomings of the responding officers and their failure to provide stop location at the onset to the stop or pursuit. Initial foot pursuit when Officer Granwell stepped from his car, he saw Mr. Vain reach toward his waistband then run into a parking lot. Officer Granwell gave chase. During the first part of the pursuit, Officer Granwell maintained visual contact with Mr. Vieira. When Mr. Vieira stopped, Officer Granwell stopped as well about 15 to 20 feet away and, when he observed a possible firearm on Mr. Vieira's person, he drew his weapon and gave commands to Mr. Vieira. The training analysis found that these actions from Officer Granwell were consistent with PPP training. One tactical decision that was not discussed by the training analysis was the apparent joint decision of the officers to have Officer Granwell go into a foot pursuit while Officer Derry followed along in the police car. The interviews of the officers similarly did not focus on this tactic and did not expressly ask Officer Derry whether he lost sight of the suspect and his partner as he drove his police car. While there is some advantage to having a police car's assets close at hand, progressive police tactics show that it is generally outweighed by the dangers of the tactic in that partners are split and what results is a single-person pursuit. However, the potential officer safety issues presented by this tactic were not identified or evaluated by the training analysis or any subsequent PPP review. The final tactical decision that was not discussed in the training analysis is the decision by Officer Derry not to activate emergency lights when he pursued Mr. Vieira and his partner. Certainly, the activation of those lights might be expected during this operation, yet the training analysis is silent as to this issue. Use of the taser Officer Granwell stated that when Officer Derry arrived, he recalled telling Officer Derry that Mr. Vieira may have a gun and instructed him to tase him. Officer Derry said that he did not hear Officer Granwell's statement about the gun, but had observed Mr. Vieira refusing commands and the direction from his partner to tase Mr. Vieira. Officer Derry stated that he then warned Mr. Vieira that he would be tased and fired the taser. Both officers observed the taser probe strike Mr. Vieira in the back, but Mr. Vieira seemed to be unaffected by the activation and then ran through the apartment complex. 11. The training analysis opined that the officer's decision to maintain distance, maintain lethal cover, give commands, and use the taser was consistent with training. However, the evidence was unclear that the officers maintained lethal cover prior to deployment of the taser. Moreover, the training analysis does not discuss the advisability of the use of the taser on an apparently armed suspect. Finally, the training analysis does not discuss the importance of Officer Grant while ensuring that his partner knew of his observation that Mr. Vieira was armed prior to instructing him to deploy the taser. The training analysis suggests that it may not have been the best option for Officer Derry to warn Mr. Vieira that he was about to deploy the taser on him. The analysis suggests that such a warning may have provided Mr. Vieira an opportunity to react, and that in dynamic and potentially dangerous encounters, the need to immediately use force may justifiably supersede a warning. However, the training analysis fails to recognize that Officer Granwell had verbally instructed Officer Derry to use the taser, clearly with an earshot of Mr. Vieira. As a result, Mr. Vieira was already on sufficient notice to react to the deployment of the taser. Accordingly, it appears that the warnings given by Officer Derry would not have provided Mr. Vieira any tactical advantage but rather offered him another opportunity to obey the officer's instructions. 
The training analysis recommends that taser training should intersperse repetition and scenario practice where no warning would be appropriate. Training and policy should not, however, intentionally diverge from one another. Training should be as consistent with policy as possible. Even the Bureau's new taser policy does not provide much guidance on when warnings might not be appropriate. One accordingly, should PPP determine that certain instances exist when no taser warning is appropriate, its policy should acknowledge and define these circumstances. The use of the taser in this case had no apparent effect on Mr. Vida. The training analysis opined that this was due to Mr. Vida's clothing or movement away from the probes. However, the analysis does not recommend additional briefing or training on the ineffectiveness of taser use 